Now the next layer we'll talk about here is a transport layer. Like in the previous sections, we have seen some application layer which provides a user uh, interface and the presentation layer defines the format for the data. And then session layer uh, creates, term, maintains and terminates the sessions. And then the next layer job is to ensure that uh, its responsibility is to ensure that end-to-end -end, uh, transmission of your information. So in simple words, we can say it's going to control the flow of information from end-to-end -end before you send. Now, once the session layer is going to build the build the uh, build the session, now the transport layer will look after the complete end-to-end -end transmission of your information. So when it is doing that, it is going to do multiple jobs here like it's going to identify the service. That's the first thing it will do based on the port numbers again. And then it will do something called multiplexing and demultiplexing, segmentation, sequencing and reassembling, error control and flow control. Now these are the different kinds of jobs it is going to do. Let's try to get into some, uh, some more in detail on, on what exactly they do. What is this process exactly? Now the first thing it is going to identify the service. Now in the transport layer, there are two major protocols works, TCP, UDP. Now TCP is, is the transport layer protocol which works and it is going to control the flow of information and it is going to decide how the traffic has to be sent. And also UDP also will do the same job, but the way they work is slightly different. Now let's try to understand what is the difference between TCP and UDP protocols. Now TCP is a connection oriented protocol, transmission control protocol, user data control protocol, whereas uh, UDP is connection less protocol. Now what's the difference between connection oriented and connection less? Now the difference between them two is connection oriented means it's more like a phone call, you know, just like a phone call. If you want to talk to your friend to pass on some information, you have to dial the number and the user has to acknowledge that he has to leave the phone. He has to press the green button. Then only you can send the information. So which means the user will get you, the end user has to acknowledge that I'm ready to receive the data. Then only you will be able to send the information. So which means when the TCP is going to send any information, it will first ask for confirmation before it actually starts sending the information. But whereas connectionless is opposite to that, just like your message or a mail, you don't need to be online to be able to receive that. It automatically comes into my inbox. So that's what connectionless. There is no acknowledgement or something to be given by the, pro by the receiver uh, for sending any information. Now, they, they by default works like that only, you know. And the, another difference between them is uh, TCP is going to support something called uh, reliable uh, communication which supports acknowledgements. Now, which means if I'm sending some information, one, two, three, four, and the receiver will send the acknowledgement, and before that, I'm not going to pass on the other information. I should get four acknowledgements saying that yes, I received this four particular packets of frames and then it's going to send the remaining four and then acknowledgement and then send the remaining four, then acknowledgement. Now the good thing about this is in case due to some reason, if any one of these packets get dropped, the receiver says I didn't receive two, three because I received one, I received four. Uh, based on the sequence numbers, it will see that, okay, I didn't receive these two. Can you please resend? It's going to send a request and it will get back or or the receiver or the sender will wait for some time. If there is no acknowledgement, in that case, it will resend the information once again. So TCP works like that only with acknowledgements. That's the reason it has slower transportation of the information because it has to send the information, wait for the acknowledgement, send for the information, wait for the acknowledgement. But whereas in case of UDP, there is no acknowledgements. It will simply pass on the information. It will not wait for the acknowledgement nor there is no acknowledgement from the receiver. So which allows faster transportation of your information. But again, it is not reliable because there is no acknowledgements. Now there are some services which works by default based on TCP and there are some services which works by default based on UDP. Now there are some sensitive traffic which needs to be, which needs to which doesn't need to wait for the acknowledgements. Like, uh, like take an example, there's a voice traffic. 
Now in the voice traffic, I'm sending some information to you saying that, hello, hi, how are you? I'm saying, I'm passing some information due to some network congestion or due to some reason, I didn't receive some of the messages. It's not clear. So you send the information and you cannot ask for to resend, right? Because you are already by the time you receive or you request and reply by the time you are into the next conversation. So that's something, you know, it's something less sensitive traffic. In case of voice, it uses some RTP protocol, voice traffic, VoIP traffic in inside your TCP. Now there are some specific traffic which needs to which need to be uh, more sensitive and resending is something not recommended. We need some fast sending of the information like TFTP, uh, DHCP, DNS. Uh, they don't they don't need any acknowledgements actually. They they just work based on UDP category. That's the reason when we define they comes under the category of UDP. But but there are some protocols which works based on TCP like HTTP protocol, uh, which will send the information and wait for the acknowledgement. FTP protocol, SNPP protocol. Now these protocols comes under the category of a TCP again, which means these these services they use TCP for controlling the flow of information, whereas these protocols on the right side they use UDP for the controlling the flow of information. Now depending upon the kind of the service we have, depending upon HTTP, if it is coming HTTP, then automatically it will identify that it is a TCP based, and it will identify the service. That's what the first thing it is going to do. So the next thing, uh, there is something called a sequencing and reassembling also happens here. I think I missed that one here. So there's something called sequencing and reassembling. Now, in fact, there is something called segmentation happens first. Now, segmentation is a process of dividing a one single message into multiple multiple frames, we can say, multiple segments. Now, let's take an example. There is information, let's say I'm saying, hello, how are you? That's something, a message I'm saying. And this particular message will be divided into multiple small, small pieces. And that's what we call as segments. Now we call this process as segmentation. And then when it is sending segmentation, it will also add some sequence numbers to that particular segment. Now sequence number is just like, you know, saying that, um, adding a sequence number, which defines the order of information. Now why? Because there is a possibility that, uh, some of the segments can go from one path and some segments might be going from other path and some segments might be coming from other path because now once they divide into segments the segments will be sent from all the possible routes uh, based on the based on the packet it will be sent and once it receives on the other end uh, there is something called uh, this is what we call as adding the sequence that's what we call as sequencing and once it is received on the other end it is going to uh, do something called reassembling now reassembling is a method where there is a possibility that whatever the information has been sent, maybe it has not received in a proper order. Okay, this is you, this is R. Now, now you're sending the information, but if you don't receive in a proper order, then there is no meaning for this. But there's nothing to worry because there is a sequence number one and a hello, how? Uh, are you the sequence number and based on that sequence number it will rearrange again into a proper order now this is what we call as reassembling now sequencing is a method of dividing uh, se sorry segmentation is a method of dividing into multiple multiple segments uh, because normally you are uh, maximum information you know the default MTU size will be always 1500 <clears throat> and anything sent over 1500 it will be automatically segmented into into small messages and then it will send over all the possible routes and before it sends each and every segment is sent uh, with some sequence numbers so that it can rearrange them in a proper order even though if they don't receive in a proper order now that's something what segmentation sequencing and reassembling and then there is something called multiplexing and demultiplexing also happens now, when you talk about any network, there might be some uh, devices and these devices might be sending some different types of traffic like voice or or some data traffic or it can be some mail traffic like that. Now, how it is going to differentiate these different different kinds of traffic? Like also there is a possibility that there are some two users. One is sending a request for Yahoo. One user is sending a request to Google. So how it's going to control? 
there is something called multiplexing happens here inside your pile where it is going to differentiate each and every signal by using some different frequencies. So there is something called time division multiplexing and frequency division multiplexing. So in case of frequency division multiplexing, it uses some different frequency ranges or different time frames in terms of time division multiplexing. There's something more into a little bit electronic kind of things, but there's something not really required for us to know much into that. But the concept of multiplexing is even though there are multiple devices or multiple signals going on the same media, but still it is going to differentiate each and every signal or each and every kind of communications by using some different colors simply similar to that by using some different frequencies and then it will ensure that it goes on the right appropriate device now this is what we call as multiplexing and and demultiplexing and this is also done at the transport layer and then there is one more thing transport layer is going to do it's going to do something called flow control Flow control is something like uh, a windowing flow control. There is something called windowing flow control where the sender is going to send some three different messages or three different uh, three three packets or three segments, and the receiver will acknowledge, and they will they will synchronize on the common windowing size of three. So if I try to send at a time five packets, the re the receiver says that I can receive only three. So please send only three. So the next time onwards, it will only send three, three, three segments at one time. Uh, that's what we call as windowing flow control. And that's what we call as window size. <coughs> so this is something adjusted based on, based on the sender and the receiver capabilities again. Now at the same time again, what, and this is also what a transport layer will look after. It will decide, it will say that how many segment has to be sent in general. That's what we call as windowing flow control. And also if you're using something called TCP messages, if any one of the frame gets dropped, it will ask for resend. So that's something, uh, that's what we call a TCP congestion uh, kind of mechanisms where if any one of these segments get dropped, in that case, it, it's, it will ask for resend because TCP supports something called acknowledgements. And based on that, it will ask to resend. Now these are all the things what uh, the transport layer is going to do here. It's going to provide, uh, that's what you can see. This is what a segmentation where it is going to differentiate the uh, complete traffic segmentation. It divides, uh, segmentation is a method of dividing multiple pack, uh, one single message into multiple. That's what segmentation again. And these are all transport layer will look after. And then there's one more thing, uh, error correction and flow control. Error correction is something like, you know, if anything gets dropped, due to some reason, due to congestion, it, it will resend that. In case of TCP based connections, we have something called error correction possible. And then there is something called windowing flow control, which defines uh, how many, how many uh, set of messages to be sent at one time. 